Let's break this vector into components. Starting with the x component, the first thing we figure out is the magnitude of the x component. Well, clearly the magnitude of the x component is 9, because the entire vector is in the x component. So the entire length of 9 represents the x component. After we figured out the magnitude, now we can figure out the signed component. Well, this vector is pointing to the right, and right is our positive direction. So that would be plus 9. We don't put a plus sign here because magnitudes are always positive. We don't need signs for the variable with a dot, but we always need a sign for the signed component, the variable without a dot. And it doesn't matter whether you're focusing on the magnitude or the signed component for the y uh, component, uh, because there is no y component. This vector is purely horizontal, there is no vertical component. So those components would be zero. Remember that I hope the first thing you did in this problem was write down the positive directions. Your work is meaningless unless you can point to the positive directions and say this is plus 9 in this positive direction. These problems that we've just done here with overall vectors that only have one component, hopefully this has made it a little bit even clearer to you what the distinction is between a component with a dot and a component without a dot. The component with the dot is just the magnitude or the length. And the component without the dot uh, is the signed component. I think uh, in this case I feel more comfortable if I say the overall vector also would get the dot to emphasize this is a magnitude. But um, uh, again, I don't worry about that so much. The important thing is using the dot correctly for the components. Let's break this vector into components. draw a right triangle that shows the components. Uh, now we've gone back to a case where the overall vector has both x and y components. If the overall vector has both x and y components, then you need to draw a right triangle to show the components. Remember that if the overall vector only has one component, then there's no need for the right triangle. It's only when um, the overall vector has both x and y components that you need the right triangle. And we need arrows. The overall vector here was pointing down and to the left. Down and left. What's the symbol for this x component here? Well, remember this is displacement, and the symbol for the x displacement is delta x. And the symbol for the y displacement is delta y. Here's the side we were given. Here's the angle we were given. We can label the hypotenuse and adjacent and opposite sides. I hope everybody knows that this is ADJ for adjacent and OPP for opposite. Now to find the adjacent side, we'll use the hypotenuse. And should we use sine or cosine? Well, at the adjacent side, ka is related to the cosine. Here, we're focusing on the 70 degree angle. All right, now we need to say what the length of the adjacent side is. I hope no one wrote this down. The length of the adjacent side is not delta y. It's delta y with a dot, just the magnitude of that side. Uh, our hypotenuse here is 8 times cosine 70. Still dealing with the magnitude. 8 times the cosine of 70 is 2.7. This is a magnitude, so I'm not going to indicate a sign. Now, though, we go on to the variable without the dot, indicating that we are going to try to figure out the sign. Well, delta y here is pointing down, and we've chosen down as the positive direction. So this should be positive. Now, if you just said that delta y was 2.7, I would consider that wrong. Delta y is not 2.7. Delta y is positive 2.7. Let's get into the habit of indicating signs, not just in front of negative components, but also in front of positive components. The only time we don't need a sign is when something is always positive. 
Well, magnitudes are always positive, so we don't need a sign here. And of course, the overall vector doesn't get a sign because the overall vector, we can only refer to its magnitude. We can't refer to it with a sign. Uh, all right, so to find the opposite side, that would be the hypotenuse times the sine of 70. Why the sine? Because so, the opposite, opposite side comes from the hypotenuse and the sine. The opposite side is not delta x. It's delta x with a dot, because opposite just refers to a length. The hypotenuse here was 8. We need to multiply by sine 70. 8 times sine 70. My notes say that that is 7.5. So far, we've been working with the trig functions. Trig functions don't tell you the sign. They just tell you the magnitude. Trig functions don't tell you the sign. They just tell you the magnitude. Uh, actually, I might mention that if you're a more advanced student, um, there are other ways that you could use trig functions that would give you the sign. Uh, maybe I should mention now that the way that we've been breaking these into components is not the only way to break vectors into components. The method that I've been demonstrating for breaking vectors into components is not the only way to break vectors into components. There are some other ways that are maybe a little snazzier for breaking vectors into components. Um, and some, uh, some of the other ways for breaking vectors into components allow you to use trig functions and automatically get the right sign. So there are some alternative ways that you can use the trig functions, and the trig function would tell you the right sign of the component as well. Uh, but I don't really think that those are a good method for a beginning student who is finding the, the material difficult to use. Um, so as usual, I'm trying to present in these videos, I'm trying to present the method that I think is best for a beginning student who is finding this material difficult. Uh, I think this is the best trigonometric approach for a beginning student who is finding the material difficult. And in this approach, the trig functions don't tell you the sign. You have to figure out the sign on your own. Uh, and after all, why should we need the trig function to tell us the sign? It's pretty easy to get the sign, isn't it? Right? It's pretty obvious here that the positive direction is to the left and delta x is to the left, so the sign is positive. We don't really need the trig function to tell the sign because we can just figure it out on our own steam. Uh, but I did want to mention that because it's possible that you might see an alternative way of breaking down, uh, of resolving vectors into components used by your instructor in the textbook. I think that the way that I'm using is really pretty standard. I think the way that I'm using is the way that most textbooks and most instructors would teach this material. Uh, I'm trying to teach this in a, in a very standard way. I'm not trying to be um, unique or do something different. The only thing I'm doing here that's different from what most instructors do is using a dot to distinguish between the magnitude and the signed component. Uh, and I'm only introducing that because I think it's a very useful notation. But except for the dot, uh, I, I think that pretty much everything I'm doing should be the same, uh, the way I'm doing these problems should be the same way that most textbooks and most instructors would do it. Uh, but if you happen to have an instructor or a textbook that used a slightly different approach, that's okay, but if you're having difficulty with this material, I think this is the best approach uh, that, that you, uh, for you to use, the approach that I'm demonstrating uh, here in these videos. Okay, so uh, previously we did a bunch of problems where the overall vector only had one component. We got finished doing a bunch of problems where the overall vector only had one component, so I wanted to go back to the other case where the overall vector has um, both components, just to make sure that you're still remembering how to do that. Uh, you probably noticed that we're doing a lot of problems here, uh, and the reason is not because these are hard. Um, these are pretty easy. Uh, I hope you're bored. I'm getting a little bored myself, um, but I'm still pressing on even though I'm bored because it's crucial uh, that we get lots of practice with this type of problem. It's not enough to be able to get these problems right. These problems have to be boringly easy for you so that you can quickly accomplish um, this step when you're doing a harder problem. And also, it's important that you not forget how to do this later on. So you gotta do a lot of drill on this right now so you can rely on this skill later on. This is not something that, uh, a skill that you wanna be trying to um, puzzling about later on in the course. This should be coming to you automatically. And that's the reason that we're doing so many practice problems. Uh, as usual, remember that if you're missing any of these, you should keep redoing them until you get them right. Uh, and if you missed a bunch of these, you should go back and do all the problems all over again before you proceed. Your goal here is not just to be pretty good at this. You've got to master this because this is the easy part of physics. And once again, let me remind you that mastering this material doesn't just mean getting the magnitudes right. It means getting the signs right as well.